Welcome! My Ottoman playlist is now complete. The topic of Turkey should not return frequently in my videos, except for the interwar period, during which their war of independence took place. This video explains how Turkish independence was achieved and what changed during the conflict. In the second half of 1918, both the Palestinian and Macedonian fronts collapsed, Ottoman armies could not stem the tide any longer. Soon Bulgaria asked for armistice, opening the route to Constantinople, which was undefended. In October, Grand Vizier Talat Pasha resigned, a caretaker government was formed, which signed the Armistice of Mudros, demobilizing the army and opening all major ports for Anton forces. The next month, the ruling Committee of Union and Progress Party dissolved, the Free Pashas fled on a German submarine, although Sultan Mehmed VI was not deposed. In mid-November, a French force landed in Constantinople, followed by British, Italian and Greek troops, officially to protect the monarchy and minorities and maintain order. However, more cities were soon occupied in eastern Thrace, Cilicia and even up north at the Black Sea. In the capital, the Freedom and the Court Party was reconstituted, Unionists were soon purged from the government, a general amnesty was issued, but court-martial trials were held, in which the free Pashas were sentenced to death in absentia. At the same time, religious and ethnic conflicts broke out between Turkish Muslims and Greek and Armenian Christians, while a resistance movement was forming against foreign occupation and the new government, which was already divided. Some Ottoman commanders refused to demobilize, but this didn't stop the Entente. The British entered Mosul, Mustafa Kemal Pasha was forced to give up Alexandretta in the southeast, but weapons were already being smuggled into these areas by clandestine organizations like the Karakol Association. Other commanders stopped taking orders from the Ottoman government, they formed resistance groups in Ankara or simply refused to surrender. In January 1919, the peace conference commenced in Paris. Citing previous secret agreements, Italy wanted southern Anatolia, France demanded Syria and Lebanon, the British desired Palestine, while Greece was planning to annex eastern Thrace, western Anatolia around Smyrna, along with Constantinople. An Italian force landed in Antalya. This induced the Greeks to land in Smyrna in May, ostensibly to protect the ethnic Greeks there. This turned into a military campaign as the Greeks moved south and north to capture the entire coast, while nationalist militias formed on both sides. Ottoman forces were first disorganized, but they started working together as their numbers increased. Kemal Pasha, hero of the Gallipoli campaign, was sent by Mehmed VI to eastern Anatolia to ensure the loyalty of local troops. Soon, through his connections and friends, he became the inspector of almost all Ottoman forces, but his secret goal was to organize resistance to both foreign occupation and the cooperative government. Instead of disarming his forces, he started building a movement, made new connections, declared that Turkey's independence was in danger, and called for a national congress to be held in Sivas. In July, a telegram from the Sultan arrived, demanding that he cease his activities. He took a leave of absence, during which he was sacked from the army, but the order for his arrest was refused. A preparatory congress took place in Erzurum, where the eastern vilayets decided that Turkey's territorial integrity would be defended, even against its own ineffective government. Kemal became the head of a new committee, which soon relocated to Sivas, and there all the defense associations united under a new name, Association of the Defense and National Rights of Anatolia and Rumelia, with Kemal as its chairman. Negotiations started between this Turkish national movement and the Ottoman government. They agreed to call for new elections in December, in which the nationalists dominated, but Kemal, out of fear of being arrested, refused to return to Constantinople, 
where a British garrison continued to heavily influence the government. Instead, he moved his capital from Sivas to Ankara, started a newspaper, and organized a new army, relying on Italian, French, and Soviet armed shipments. In January 1920, the last session of the Ottoman parliament met in Constantinople, but Kemal declared in a telegram that the rightful government of Turkey was now in Ankara. Just as he feared, the British leapt into action. In March, they arrested many nationalists and occupied key buildings. Their aim was to divide Turkey, pitting Christians against Muslims and supporting local warlords. Parliament was dissolved. The Sultan declared a return to absolutism, but he was just a British puppet, while Kemal gained more legitimacy, making it possible for him to create a grand national assembly essentially a new parliament in Ankara, relying on escaped and newly elected deputies. Fatwas were issued against both sides, then the British dispatched smaller units against the nationalists, while the Sultan raised a new army, relying on untaunt money, but after a clash at Izmit, the British realized that a much larger force was required against the nationalists, and since they did not have such a force in the region, they opted for Greek intervention the Greeks would now have the opportunity for territorial expansion. In August 1920, the Treaty of Sevres was signed, placing the Straits and Constantinople under international control and giving large territories to Greece, France, Britain and Armenia. The Ottomans in Greece never ratified it, while Kemal's GNA accepted a new constitution which gave more authority to him instead of the unelected Sultan. It would be the basis for the War of Independence. In the south, after occupying several provinces in 1918, French forces, relying on Armenian volunteers, encountered resistance and assaults. In February 1920, after a brief siege, they abandoned the city of Marash, where massacres against local Armenians took place, then gradually withdrew from Cilicia. France signed a separate treaty in March 1921, then another in October, after which their troops left. In the east, the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk first expanded the border with Armenia and Georgia, but after the collapse, a large Armenian state was created in the Treaty of Sevres. Once the nationalist army was created, and the Bolsheviks extended their influence in Russia, they cooperated, and in November 1920, Armenia was overrun by the Soviets, after which it no longer represented a threat to Turkey. The Treaty of Kars, in March 1921, established the new border, which remains in effect today. The greatest threat was the Greek invasion, which began with the landing in Smyrna, back in May 1919. In 1920, they took control of western Anatolia, and while the Treaty of Sevres was signed, they continued their advance in October to defeat the Turkish nationalists. However, they overextended their supply lines, Turkish resistance stiffened, and when Prime Minister Venizelos lost the election back home, his pro-war faction weakened. King Alexander died, his predecessor Constantine returned, and purged many of the Venizelist officers, dividing the army into two opposing factions. In July 1921, while a conference in London was ongoing, the Greeks advanced towards Ankara, but then stopped, which gave time for Kemal to organize his troops. In September, the Greeks failed to win the Battle of Sakaria, they retreated, which convinced their allies that the Treaty of Sevres could not be enforced. In 1922, a Turkish counter-offensive started, relying on continued Bolshevik support. In August, they defeated the Greek army and advanced on Smyrna, which was taken in September, ending the campaign. The city was set on fire, atrocities were committed against local Armenians and Greeks, even though Turkish soldiers were warned not to turn against the civilian population. Kemal, who declined any peace offers, now marched on Constantinople to regain it, and while the British were ready to resist, they did not receive any support from their dominions or their allies, who were tired of war. The Greeks retreated to the pre-war border. After this, the
the two sides were ready to negotiate. The armistice of Mudaniya was followed by the abolition of the Sultanate in November. The last Sultan left the country on a British ship. The Treaty of Lausanne was signed the next year, in July 1923. It recognized the Grand National Assembly as the legitimate government of the Republic of Turkey, creating the borders we know today, although the question of Mosul would only be decided in a 1926 plebiscite, and the Turkish Straits would be under international commission until 1936. The Ottoman capitulations were abolished, the Ottoman Empire disappeared, the War of Independence was over, its successful conclusion showed that international treaties can only be enforced when you have sufficient military power and public support to back it up. Thank you for watching. See you next time.